Hey, we're here to talk about monkey flowers. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know exactly where that common name came from. I've heard a few different stories. I'll let you look that up on your own if you want. Um, but Mimulus, this is the genus name. This is what you'll see in the Jepson manual when you look up monkey flowers. But the thing is that the name Mimulus does not exist in California anymore, unfortunately. Now um, we have two different names for species that were once in the genus Mimulus. They're called Erythranthi and Diplicus. I'm not going to hold you to those names yet. This is probably the last semester that Plant Tax will be teaching this as um, is. I'm just not ready to make the change yet, and the Jepson says it. Anyway, um, you can tell that they're really pretty flowers. I think that's the first thing that you might be able to notice. We've got a lot of color variations already, just on the second slide. There's a term that applies to this corolla shape. It's one that we learned in the last video. Whoops. And so if, you've, if you haven't seen the video on the mint family, Lamiaceae, then go back and watch that first. Notice how we kind of have the upper part and then the lower part to these five fused petals. You can see it in the picture with the red flower too. Yeah, that term bilabiates, it applies here. It applies to the genus Mimulus. Okay, so yeah, let's look at, let's do a quick floral formula, just get that out of the way. Um, we've clearly got zygomorphic flowers again, just like in the mints. We do have five fused petals, hmm, just like the mints. Um, again, the bilabiate corolla, let's, let's do that as a two plus three fused corolla. They do have, oops, don't need a four, uh, we don't need that plus sign there. They do have four stamens. They're not fused to each other, but they are fused to the corolla. And then we've got two fused carpels of a superior ovary. That's the floral formula that will be consistent um, throughout this genus. Okay, let's move on. Now the calyx, um, well, okay, now we can't see the calyx in this picture, but the calyx, which is fused, is also persistent. It sticks around for a long time. More on that in a minute. Something that you can see in this picture is the stigma, which is sticking out right here in the picture, it's bilobed. They're always going to have a bilobed stigma. Can we see that in that previous picture as well? Yeah, this one up here, you can see pretty clearly that the stigma has sort of uh, two sides to it, sort of two plate-like sides. So a bilobed stigma is a uh, genus feature. There's something else really awesome about the stigma that we're going to talk about later. Can you tell from this picture too that they've got opposite leaves? They do. We've got a variety of habit. Uh, uh, well, they're usually herbaceous in this genus. They're actually always herbaceous in this genus. Some can be annual, some can be perennials. We don't have things like woody trees or anything like that in this genus. Isn't this a really special looking flower? It's, gosh, it's cute. I hate to be anthropomorphic, but gosh, here are just some more looks um, at the diversity we see within this genus. Talked about the calyx. It's fused. There are five sepals. It's persistent as well. The calyx, more on that in a sec. The last thing that I need you to know about the calyx is that it's pleated. Can you see in this picture, what color should I use? Can you see in this picture right here that the calyx, you can see it maybe better right here. It sort of has folds. And oh, you can see it really well in this picture down here. There are these really kind of obvious folds. They're sort of like a pleated skirt, or maybe it reminds you of the folded up accordion-like leaves of a young palm leaf. Yeah, we call the uh, calyx of Mimulus pleated. So you've got to have that in your notes somewhere. It is a definitely a good uh, genus identification feature. Uh, lots of cute ornamentals in this genus as well. You can definitely find some monkey flowers at any nursery. More about that persistent calyx. It sticks around while the fruit is developing. And this is a jar from the plant tax lab. I thought I would take a picture of it right before we left campus. Um, because what happens in at least some genera, uh, some species in this genus is the calyx kind of becomes inflated and sort of really obvious. And so even if you don't have those flowers with the bilabia corolla and the bilobe stigma, um, you can still really kind of identify this genus when it's in fruit based on that calyx. If you were to rip open that calyx, this is what you would find inside. This is a 
matured capsule of a monkey flower, those two fused carpels. All right, about that stigma. Guys, this is other level. Um, you might need to sit down for this. Are you sitting down? Okay, so the stigma. It is bilobed, I told you that. You can very clearly see that in this image on the left, right? Or in this upper diagram right here. The stigma it is plate-like and it's wide open. Well, what happens is a pollinator, it's flying around and it comes f into contact with the stigma first. It touches that stigma, hopefully depositing some pollen, and then the stigma closes. It closes quite rapidly for a plant movement. Um, and, and then it ends up in this position, like this, or like in this position you can see right here, where those two plates sort of close on one another. Are you serious? Plants, these plants move. And so then when the pollinator has gone in, uh, ha has come into contact with that stigma, then it goes in further and it gets the nectar, which is down here. Here would be the nectar, N. The pollinator comes into contact with the stamens in here. And that's the where the pollen from this flower is coming from. So what might be happening here is this closing of the stigma is a way to prevent the pollen from landing on its own stigma. Or in other words, it's a way to avoid self-pollination, which is extremely important in, well, all eukaryotes. <laughs> well, most, most eukaryotes. Definitely all plants and animals. Okay, so I wanted to end this video with a, another short little video. Switch the screen up a little bit here. Is this, mm, this going to work for us? It might not. There we go. So someone here has recorded this, just a short video. Check it out. This is real time, not sped up. That is pretty darn fast for a flower, right? I mean, come on, that was amazing. All right, well, I'll leave you with that and I'll see you at our next video, bye.